All right, welcome back everyone. So we're gonna be hanging out for today's camera classics with the Sony A7 Mark I. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. So why the A7 you ask? Well, it's almost a decade old at this point. And when you look at the specs, Full HD at 60 frames per second, 24 megapixels of Bayer sensor, no IBIS. You think, well, what's so special about this? Well, A, it's basically up to spec to anything Canon has put out in the recent years. Instead, it's an almost 10 year old Sony camera. So for me, this camera is still very up to spec for today's standards, even though it doesn't have 8K, doesn't, uh, flip your waffles for you, I don't know. But this can still be a workhorse and suit many people's needs just fine. All right, so let me show you the kit that I've been running with, obviously the Sony A7. We have the Zeiss 24 to 70 constant F4 glass mounted upon the, now this lens had a lot of negative feedback when it first came out as well because of quality control, but I really enjoy the lens and it pairs well with the A7 because there is no IBIS in this body. On the front here, we have the variable ND filter by KNF Concepts. It's a slim fader, nothing too special. Does a job for filming. Now, on the vlogging side of things, because we don't have that articulating screen that wasn't introduced in the Sony lineup up until the A7S III and A7C. It does tilt, so that's a plus. We have the small rig mirror doohickey here. That way we can do our vlogging type of deal. And we have a little Movo mic at the top. Now let's talk specs. Again, full HD, 60 frames per second is where it max out at. The color depth is 420 at 8 bits. So honestly, everything is standard here and what you should expect. Now, why I say it's standard is because, I mean, look at say Canon. They didn't introduce 4K into their systems until later in the game. And even when they did, it was majorly cropped in. Why even have it then? Right here, you have a 24 megapixel bare full frame sensor, which is essentially what they still use in the A7 Mark III. Except there you can expect a new color science, but honestly I'm a fan of the old color science as well. Which is subjective, it's not a pro towards the camera, I just like it. Now if we look at bodies, it may not look like it how I have it beefed up here, but if you compare with say my Sony A7R Mark II, the later model, and the models uh, after it, they're a little bit bigger and a tiny bit heavier than the original A7s. In fact, this was, up until the A7C of course, the lightest E-mount camera you could buy and the smallest. So if size is a factor, this is one reason to go for it. Now let me segue that into some pros with the camera, which obviously for one, it's the size and it's an E-mount, because it's E-mount with that short flange distance, you can adapt almost any lens under the sun to it. Now I came from Canon, so I have a lot of Canon lenses with long flange distances, but when I pair, say, the Sigma MC11 adapter to this, it works like a dream. I mean, inherently with a camera like this too, another pro would be the price because it's nearly a decade old and it still competes with modern cameras. Again, a 24 megapixel bare sensor for around $500, who, who else is gonna beat that? So to wrap up pros, it's a full frame sensor for starters that you can find at an affordable rate and because it's an E-mount system, you can adapt almost any lens you want to it. Now let me segue into the cons. First off, this. Listen. The one thing to note about using the Sony A7 for street photography like I am right now is the shutter is very loud. I tried to take a picture of a homeless person across the street and the shutter not only caught their attention but they started yelling back at me and the street was real busy. So if that gives some kind of indication as to how loud this camera's shutter is, take it for what it is. It's still a good camera. This camera was notoriously loud and it has what you call shutter shock, which means when the shutter slams down, not only is it loud, but it could produce extra noise in your image that's obviously unwanted. Because of that, 
the original A7 series got flack. I personally like the sound. It's one of my guilty pleasures and honestly one of the reasons why I bought the A7 again in the first place. Now shutter shot can be mitigated by simply using a faster shutter speed, which you should be doing anyways because another con of this camera is there's no in-body stabilization. But is it really a con? Do you need it? It's not like you're missing out on much with IBIS anyways because a full frame sensor is just simply hard to stabilize to its full potential. Sure, it comes in handy, but if you pair with a lens with optical stabilization or simply use a quicker shutter speed, it's not really much of an issue. Alright, so one thing to note about the Sony A7 is how touchy the exposure comp dial is. It's real easy just to slip your hand and change it, so just note that. Now another con for me would be the autofocus. It's not horrible by any means, but sometimes it tends to hunt or focus on the background rather than your subject. This can really be seen if you're trying to do autofocus portrait work or say street photography and sometimes the camera will just latch onto the background instead of your subject and it can be pretty tedious and annoying which segues into my next con and that is the screen is pretty dim and it's really only noticeable when it's real bright outside especially when the snow is reflecting off of the environment like it is here in the midwest even when I use a viewfinder it's still hard to see what I'm looking at now that walks in tandem with the frustrating fact of it uh, missing focus and hitting the background and you can't even see what you're focusing on because the screen is just so dim. Now something like this, there's a workaround which is A, use manual focus, which works like a treat on this camera, especially because you can magnify in, pinch and zoom. So to wrap up the con list, number one, shutter shock is an issue for a lot of people. I personally like the sound. I like it. I don't like shutter shock. I like the sound that the shutter makes. There's no silent mode for this camera, so expect to be heard. The focus tends to hit the background rather than the subject. Sometimes a workaround for this would just be simply use manual focus. It doesn't do it every time, but it's annoying enough, especially paired with my last real negative of this camera, which is the screen. It's not the best especially in bright light, especially, especially in Minnesota when it's bright out with uh, glowing white snow. Let me wrap up by saying, again, this is a great choice. Uh, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts, etc., etc. generic YouTube stuff. Subscribe, follow the Instagram for content related to this. Thank you for watching.